I'm Kevin Lindley, Product Manager with Eaton Corporation, and today we're going to go over the unboxing and startup of Eaton's Next Generation 5PX UPS. Before removal, be sure to grab a friend and refer to the instructions on the outside of the box. Once you open the box, go ahead and remove the accessories on top. First, we have the quick start guide and other documentation, communication cables, and the tower feet for tower installation of the UPS. The four post rail kit is found under the UPS when you remove it from the box. Once you remove the UPS from the box, you'll find the four post rail kit in the bottom. Refer to the quick start guide for more instructions on how to start up the UPS. To begin, we'll remove the front bezel from the unit by pressing the side and pulling the bezel off. Next, we will connect the positive battery connector, then replace the front bezel on the unit. For tower installation, rotate the unit on edge, then remove the front bezel. Next, connect the positive battery connector, then rotate the front bezel by squeezing the sides, rotating it, and placing it back into position. Finally, reinstall the front bezel, then rotate the jewel at the bottom of the unit to the upright position. Before you're done, be sure to register your unit for up-to-date firmware and other tips on your unit. Be sure to attach the tower feet to the unit to secure it in the upright position. Before you plug in your UPS, connect your loads to the back of the unit. We have two groups, group one and group two, that can be controlled individually, either manually or automatically in the event of an extended power outage. For instance, if you want to extend the runtime for your most critical loads connected to the black outlets. These groups can also be used to cycle a hung server, for instance, if they're connected to group one or group two. If you have extended battery modules or EBMs, you can connect them here as well as the communication cable into this port. If you want to install an optional network or connectivity card, you can install it here at this time. Refer to the manual for using the input output connectivity options or the serial connectivity options on the UPS. After plugging in the UPS, the unit will turn on. Go ahead and remove the registration sticker, then begin the setup. To turn on the unit, Press and hold the power button for several seconds. The unit is protecting your load when you see the green LED at the top and the blue bar at the bottom. If you see another color from the LED bar, be sure to check for any indications or alerts that you need to resolve before continuing. In the next generation 5PX, we have an all new user interface. At the top left, we have the load power consumption. On the top right, we have the battery charge percentage, as well as the battery runtime remaining. And at the bottom, we have the UPS status, as well as the status of the groups on the back of the unit, group one and group two. A check mark means the groups are powered. Now we're going to go over the battery removal and replacement for the next generation 5PX. Please refer to the user guide for proper PPE and procedures when performing this task. First, I'm going to remove the front bezel, then disconnect the batteries from the unit. Next, I'll remove the three screws holding the metal face plate to the unit. Then remove the metal faceplate from the UPS. Next, pull the batteries out using the pull tabs that are tucked into the battery tray. Then slide the tray out of the unit. Once you remove the old batteries from the UPS, slide in the new battery pack. Ensure the pack slides all the way to the back of the UPS. Next, feed through the battery connector through the metal battery cover plate. 
Then slide the cover plate into position. Ensure it's slid to the left all the way so that the screw holes line up. Next, attach the screws to secure the metal battery plate. Then connect the batteries to the unit. Finally, reinstall the front cover. 